you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trevetti, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Med Zone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. Uh, good morning. This is a morning edition of Cairo Hustle live stream, and I have Monica Berger with me over there. I always do the wrong way. Uh, she has come <laughs> in from Idaho Falls, Idaho, and I am here with you coming from the Grand Valley, which is Grand Junction on the western slope of Colorado, which I like to say no one lives here. And then I say I came here because I wanted to hear the birds chirp. So um, before we jump in with you, Monica... Uh, I'm going to say thank you to Cairo Sushi for sponsoring this episode. If you guys Yay! aren't going to Cairo Sushi and you guys want to go to Cairo Sushi, reach out to me. I have a 50% off discount for anybody out there listening. And if you go to checkout and you just put Chester in to the checkout there, you can get 50% off of your tickets to go hang out with all of these massive influencers uh, on June 21st through 24th at the Westgate in Las Vegas. So that's awesome. my, that's my pitch for them. And I'm really <laughs> excited to be a part of the Cairo Sushi family. I wore my mentor up shirt today, uh, the samurai, because I'm a mm -hmm. member of the Cairo Sushi Samurai. And uh, I believe in mentorship. So I help a lot of people that need it. So let's go back to you now. And uh, awesome. welcome, to, welcome to the Cairo Hustle live stream. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I, I told you I'm a little spun up today. So I might get a little fiery, you know. Hey, we I'm welcome. Not gonna try to, you know, I'm not going to try to contain myself because we've got a big message we need to get out. So I'm not going to apologize for being fired up, actually. Well, let's jump off the top rope right away, WWF right. style. And uh, <laughs> what is Intersect? I know that's one of the things you like to have uh, a conversation about. Well, a lot of people don't know why. What does that name stand for? What does it represent? Well, Intersect is, um, in my mind, I've got a little crazy warped mind, but um, the intersection between, it, it stands for a couple things, it, um, or represents a couple things, it, intersection between so much of what's going on in our culture and our world today of why people are sick. And we know it's our traumas, our toxins, our thoughts, our technology, um, and the intersection of that and how it's um, destroying our our human biology, our health. Um, and then it, it's also an intersection of bringing um, what we call the connect, combining optimal neurology, nutrition, chiropractic exercises together. And unless you have that chiropractic piece in that mix, you're going to miss a big piece of, of the puzzle of, of trying to help people. And it's not drugs. You can't, you can't do it via drugs. And just like we were talking before we started, if everybody just starts with the adjustment, you can make the influence with the other ideas within the, the health uh, mind, the health body, the health eating. But we have to start with the adjustment, right? Absolutely. And, and here's the deal. You know, so many people know that they're in autonomic dysregulation, but they don't know what to call it. They're not going to come in and say, hey, doc. I'm subluxated and I'm an autonomic dysregulation. But the bottom line is that's what's going on. And whether it be the source of it being because they're eating crappy, the standard American diet, technology's doing it. Um, our thoughts, that, that dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. And by the way, this is being talked about in Western medicine. They might be using different lingo, um, but a lot of them are calling it autonomic dysregulation, dysautonomia. The problem is they don't know how to address it from a foundational standpoint. Yeah, uh, I, I totally get that. And I, I think languaging is uh, a massive importance when it comes to uh, communicating with people. You know, if people know what your mission is, and I know that's one of the things we're going to talk about with you is your mission. And we're going to talk about neurology. We're going to talk about kids and we're going to talk about the development of the mind and the body coming together and the adjustment. Um, I know that once we start talking about the big idea and, like I said, innate intelligence and keeping subluxation in the vernacular, there's so much about, you know, the words that we use and how we say them and the inflection and the vernacular that we carry. 
So let's 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 dive right into that. And I know that you're fired up to talk about these topics. <laughs> yeah, I'm fired up. Um, you know, I I think um, I, I deal with a lot of neurology, and I deal a lot from the neurodevelopmental standpoint. Um, and, and I started working in the sensory motor dysregulation, sensory processing disorder, whatever you want to call it, um, over 25 years ago, and I got into it before there was a lot of um, um, functional neurology going on in our profession. So I would attend conferences that were um, medically based or OT based or PT based because of my background. And I'd be the only chiropractor there lots of times. And they would look at me like, why are you here? And I'm saying, um, hi, Jason. Um, <laughs> And my response to them would be kind of in naivety, actually, thinking they would just accept me. I'm here because you're, you guys all talk about autonomic dysregulation, parasympathetic, sympathetic imbalance, and that's what chiropractors do. And they would look at me like, are you crazy, lady? But that's really what we do. And if you look at translational information, it's research that we have, that we know about. It takes 17 years for that to become accepted in the medical community. And then it takes even longer for the general public to accept it. So back then, they were talking about autonomic dysregulation. They just don't know the chiropractic piece. And that is the foundation of all health issues. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I just think that most people, they think that chiropractic is a bone game. They don't realize that chiropractic is a nervous system game. Absolutely. And now we know that as of, uh, was it 1998, that Kevin Tracy came in, he was a, a, a neurologist, and he looked at what regulates immune function. And he, the whole medical community was aghast when they realized it was the vagus nerve. And that's changed the whole trajectory of uh, nervous system and immune system and how they work together and the importance of vagal tone and vagus nerve. Um, and that's what we've known innately for, you know, for the life of chiropractic. Now, if we take that piece and we see what's going on with quote unquote mental health these days, because that's really a biggie for me. Uh, my life was changed in an unfortunate manner about a year and a half ago um, from the loss of a, a of my closest friend to suicide. Um, and you don't recover from that easily. Um, but if you look at the whole ramifications of what is going on with the stressors in our body and you understand the neurology behind it, you understand the chiropractic piece. You understand where we have to take the whole chiropractic story and start teaching people on diet, on lifestyle, on movement, um, and the foundations of health. And of course, given, given, hi, Nick, <laughs> I'm on a roll, Nick, you know, this week was tough. We had, we had two. And unfortunately it is when we have a famous person or two famous people within one week that um, leave this world due to a suicide, it, it becomes a bigger story. But what's happening in our communities and our practices in everyday life where children and adults are taking their lives kids are going there and shooting up schools. If you understand what's going on on the basic neurophysiological realm, it's not going to be drugs. That's going to change the story. I'm saying I'm, you got me fired up. Well, it, it, it's like Billy DeMoss would always say it's you're, you're not going to, you know, get better because you have a lack of some drug in your body. Right. And you know, <laughs> and, and the thing is, if we look at most of these people, they are on medications and the medications is what's made them worse. So now if we go back to just, just nervous system development and key core things from a sensory motor paradigm, you have to have good early in life. Those first two years of life is critical for proper biomechanical um, movement for a child to integrate these things we call primitive reflexes. If they don't integrate, we stay and we live in this startle flight or fight response. It drives up that limbic portion of our brain. That limbic portion is what gets us stuck in this fight or flight. It's the emotional center of our brain. It shuts down higher functioning, what we call the executive functioner, the frontal lobe of the brain. By the way, BTW, by the way, 
um, look at Heidi Havoc's work and, and, the, and the, the um, effects of a chiropractic adjustment on the frontal lobe. Okay. Anyway, when we don't have good executive functioning, we can't reason. No, we can't be rational. We don't have good impulse control. Um, we don't have good timing regulation. We cannot make good choices. So if we get to the roots and a child is subluxated, they can't detoxify. They can't go through these motor milestones. They can't develop those higher centers. Then they're in their technology and they're eating the standard American diet and drinking pop and whatever. Now we have a crisis and it's not a mental health crisis. It is a physiological health crisis. You know, my post yesterday, Monica, was once the uh, body becomes unfit, the mind becomes unfit. Absolutely. And we all know, we, you know, we know so much now about the brain body, and, uh, the brain gut and the gut brain connection. People might not understand if you look at the roots, when you're in autonomic drive, when you've got cortisol cranking, it, it destroys the mucosal lining, the membrane of the GI system. Then you get that leaky gut or gut permeability, whatever you want to call it. The toxins leak. They can leave that gut barrier. And where are they going to go? They go to the brain and cause a chronic inflammatory load on the brain. You cannot be healthy mentally if you've got that circuit always fired up. And then people become, you know, mentally unstable. They get depressed. They have anxiety. They don't feel good about how they present in public. And then they start distancing them, themselves from quality of life. And then their friends don't know them. And before that, that happens, they go and get on some type of a medication. They go further. They they go further away from what is good and what is healthy and what is actually what they should be doing and then they distance themselves from us and we have stories like yours where somebody leaves us because they go through a downward spiral of not knowing who where to go or who to trust and they don't love themselves anymore yeah and it's and it's a and it's a vicious cycle that's extremely hard to get out of unless you have a team a and and it's so important whatever your practice paradigm is um, I, I told you before we started that I, I'm on an Elvis kick. I've been one of my, my mantra for the week. Um, I'm, I love music. I don't, I love to sing, but I don't sing well. And I love music, but my mantra for the week has been Elvis Presley's song. Um, well, actually uh, before him, um, Blue Eyes, uh, Frank Sinatra did it was, I did it my way, but I really would like you guys to listen to the words of that song. Um, and there's a line in there, like um, when there was doubt, I, you know, I ate it up and spit it out. If we ever doubt ourselves, you need to bite that doubt off, chew it up, spit it out, and get on with your work, with, get on with our mission. Um, because we have a lot of work to do to change this tra trajectory of what's going on in this country. You know, now one in six children have a neural developmental disorder. Some statistics are one in 22 males have autism. Overall, one in 59 have autism. The, the suicide rate is skyrocketing um, globally in this country. It's increased by 30%. This is not okay. And it's not going to go away unless we collaborate. So whatever practice paradigm you want to work in, let's work together. If you don't want to do a lot of neuronutrition or so forth, you can very effectively maintain your subluxation message and your subluxation stance and your chiropractic philosophy and in, in and titrate in these other pieces to the puzzle. And if it's not your bag of chips, that's fabulous. But work with other docs in our profession to create a global stance to change the health. Yeah. Um, I, I, I helped somebody yesterday. They were having trouble with their uh, motivation or their personal like uh, drive and how they felt about something. And I said uh, something that reiterated from Fred Schofield for me is I can, I will, I must, I am. And if people just s held on to that and when they're having a tough time, um, you know, my, my mantra is go forth and serve, go forth and serve, go forth and serve. And when I found out that I was a true servant, that's when the whole paradigm shifted for me. And that's when I started loving what I did. I didn't always like what I do, Monica. There were times where I was just, I was, I was not mentally fit because I didn't like the path that I was on. So I worked 
day and night, day and night, day and night, over and over with repetition, telling myself good, happy ideas, telling myself strategies to break away from, you know, you know, what, what, what finds all of us eventually, if we become alone and lonely and we don't have anybody believing in us, all it takes is one person to believe in you and it can change everything. Yeah. There's, you know, I talk about like the six C's for, for children uh, to to be healthy. And, and one of them is a sense of community. Um, These kiddos that struggle with learning attention behavior issues. So many times in the classroom setting, their classes, their, their desk is, you know, set aside, they have to set aside because they can't, because they want to talk too much or kick the desk of the kid in front of them or wiggle around or whatever. So they isolate these children. That's not the way to do it. A sense of community is what we all need. And by the way, if you look at children's behavior, when I lecture to teachers and principals and schools, I tell them a child's behavior is telling you the story of what their nervous system is lacking. And if you understand their behavior, what they're seeking, what sensory load they're seeking to calm themselves, then you understand how to work with that child. Don't isolate them. Well, it touches me because um, I was born 1978. I'll be 40 this year. And from age zero to age like 10, I struggle with dyslexia hardcore. And a lot of people don't know that about me, but it uh it touches Thanks me sharing. It, well it touches me because had That's- they had they been as advanced back then with drugging people i would have been on drugs and i wouldn't be the same guy you guys know today right right um because they don't that is their solution they don't look at what that person's struggle is telling them about their neurological integrity and if you understand that if you understand that dyslexia is very much associated with this reflex we call the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, it's not being able to cross right brain and left brain. It's a neurological immaturity. And there's things we can do to basically through the law of neuroplasticity to rewire those circuits. You throw in some good nutrition and you throw in positive reinforcement and, you know, there, there's a dramatic change. A drug isn't going to do that. Well, here's the truth of it, too, is growing up, um, I, I, I didn't come from a very healthy background. Um, I, 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 I was the youngest of five. My parents split up and, uh, you know, it's just tough. So any kid out there that's dealing with those type of things, they need to have people like you that know how to rewire them and to unsubluxate them. And I can only tell you, if I would have got adjusted at birth or if I had got adjusted like early on in life, some of those those learning conditions that I was dealing with, um, they might not have even been an issue. So that's why I urge people to at least get their kids checked. And Absolutely. The, the chiropractor is going to adjust them if necessary. And there's this amazing part of us that you can talk more about, but there's these parts of us like the amygdala inside of the brain that, that do so much to regulate things that are happening in our body. And that's one of my, that's what I call the rate limiting factor of, uh, of the human. The amygdala takes in all the sensory input. And if it's scrambled and dysregulated when it, when it gets in there, that amygdala is, I call it the fear monger. And it will literally not let us integrate one of the biggest reflexes, which is that Mara or the startle reflex. And that's what's life prohibiting because we're always going to be afraid to take that next step, if, if it becomes a pattern. So for example, um, my brother had a stroke at age 49, a massive stroke. It wasn't, it didn't have a motor response, but it um, created a lot of sensory disturbances. Um, the mesial temporal lobe, his cerebellum and his occipital lobe. Um, so he, anytime he gets overstimulated or feels a similar, um, the similar sensation as to when he initially had that stroke, he can go into these massive convulsive looking um, episodes. And what happens is it hits that amygdala. We get that hardcore cortisol, norepinephrine, epinephrine cranking out. And now you get a downward spiral of hormones, neurotransmitters, and you name it. Um, but it becomes a pattern. It, it now just can be a perceived threat. doesn't even have to be a real threat. So, you get a situation, you might have heard of the ACEs study, the Adverse Childhood Experiences study. Children whose uh, parents have been split up or alcoholism or whatever, 
there any perceived stressor or threat that comes in that whole loop is automatically activated you've made it to cairo hustle live sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession this episode is brought to you by close for cairo cairo sushi dr barbara eaton's 56 day chiropractic boot camp dr alok trevetti the black diamond club Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, MedZone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. And you know, for me, hearing all this when I was a young guy, um, I felt like my brain was on overdrive on you know certain things. Mm-hmm. And it was exhausting. It's exa- absolutely cuz you are you are trying so hard and the and here's the problem is we can't feel what you feel. You look great, you look handsome, you look, you know, and and so we impose our thoughts of what you should be or shouldn't be, what you should be able to do or should not be able to do or how you should act or whatever our perceived thoughts are. We do not know what's going on in the body and the mind of anybody. And little kiddos cannot articulate. I'm they're mentally exhausted. So they're going to act out and their brains are going to short circuit and they're going to misfire. And then they get labeled. And with that label comes a medication and it's a downward spiral. Well, I wasn't good at school for a long time, but I'll tell you what I was really good at was sports. So yeah. I, I knew that the things I didn't do well in the, the school, I could dominate on the on the field and everything that i wasn't in the classroom i was everything on the the the, the, yeah so i feel like we have these like this this idea that i didn't even know what it was until like 10 years ago which is innate intelligence i didn't even know that we had innate intelligence inside of us i didn't know that god designed us to be organized with an organ system (laughs) that should be functioning the way it's supposed to so i make these connections with people i was telling you i go out and i sell chiropractic services because i believe everybody deserves to at least get checked and adjusted if necessary and i think that there's so much power in the adjustment and i think that there's so many people out there with the skills to take care of people they just don't know the business model to take care of people in and they they have the the healing hands and they have the ability to check people and to correct vertebral subluxation i just don't think that we have that we don't even understand how much quality of life we can provide if everybody oh. just got adjusted oh absolutely amen um and and you know another thing is the term functional medicine, whatever the term you want to use, functional wellness. As a chiropractic profession, we should be leading that pledge because the one thing that's missing from people and, and they're, oh God, they're doing amazing work, you know, from NDs and MDs and people looking more um, alternative. But the one thing they don't have is that power to power to regulate the nervous system that we have. And so we really should be on the forefront of that whole functional wellness movement, because I will tell you, I get people, I have a waiting list. Like I, I think we're up like, like 60 people on our waiting list right now to get in as a new patient. It's crazy. People want to get well. And they've been to many practitioners of many different specialties, but you add that ability to regulate the nervous system and that is so phenomenally powerful. And, and, and we need to get that message out there and be on the forefront. And, and then whatever else you want to add in or not add in, that's fine. That's your bag of chips. But let's work together to cohesively be the forefront of this wellness paradigm. And, and, you know, you said a couple of things that I'm just going to touch on. And I think that people don't realize how powerful the adjustment is because it does unlock the nervous system. It allows the body to go into the state of ease rather than dis-ease. And it allows the body to heal from inside out. And there is a brain-body connection like you're mentioning. And me being a lay person, I just looked at the somatic chart and I'm like, huh, what you talked about when we opened up this interview, there's that green thing coming down there and that's the vagus nerve and it connects to all the organs and it starts up there at C1 and it's the, it's like the pipeline of energy. And when that thing is disrupted or clogged, how could you, how could you expect somebody to have harmony inside of their body? You can't. 
you know, and I tell people it's the big kahuna. It's a big, bad voodoo daddy nerve. You know, um, it reg it regulates your inflammatory response. It regulates your immune system. It regulates your poop and poop is everything, your GI system, you know, and when they get that connection, it's very easy for them to understand. All right. Yeah. I'm not sleeping. I'm not pooping. I'm totally stressed out. My adrenals are shot. Hey, you know, I, I need my, my voodoo daddy, my, my big bad voodoo daddy working. It always, it always like kind of freaks me out when people tell me they don't use the bathroom. It freaks me out when people tell me they have problems sleeping. Like those are, that's those are when your that's, that's when your body goes into cellular repair. That's exactly. when your body, that's when your body actually chills out and it says, thank God I had a chance to rest <laughs> because tomorrow's going to need me and it's going to need my energy. So when people are like, Oh, I don't sleep. I'm like, well, you need to get adjusted, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Tone, get that get that brake pedal going and, and tone it down, you know. And I tell people, it's it's like everybody's into their digital devices, you know. Hope, heaven forbid, if your phone doesn't, the battery's dead, you know. You got to charge that sucker up. But what if your body's battery's dead? You know, we don't stop and take time to think. I need to recharge my mind, my body, my spirit, my soul, my brain. You know. Have, have you heard of the idea of digital dementia? Yeah. In fact. For our Intersect for Life, um, acad- we have, I, I have what we call a learning academy. Um, it's taken me a little longer than I thought because I wanted to add some really cool stuff. But I'm doing a whole webinar series um, and, and uh, tech brain campaign for those that are in our Intersect for Life learning academy. Um, because if you do take somebody and they're in this position and they're doing their thing on their cellular device and then you remove that from them, they have the same posture as somebody with dementia. Yeah. And 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 then you look this, you look at the biomechanics and the neurology, you look at the upper cervical spine. It's going to be huge in vestibular function. The vestibular system is really the head honcho. It regulates um, all the other incoming sensory input. Um, and it's by the way, it's it's um, it's associated with dyslexia, with asthma. Um, there's research studies out there that that looks at um, that says those children with asthma should they should be tested for their balance ability because of vestibular system's key. It's it's associated with um, scoliosis with immune compromise. So you're in this position all the time. You compromise the vestibular and then the proprioceptive input. You've got dysregulation into the sensory thalamus, then into the amygdala. Now you've got ANS dysregulation. HPA axis dysregulation and everything that we're talking about. The and then the frontal lobe shuts down. Frontal lobe shuts down. You cannot be reasonable and rational. And then the loop is off. It's done. And, and where do we where do we make all our decisions from in life? From from an emotional standpoint, from that limbic system. But they might not be the right emotional decision. It might be the decision to there's a gun in the cabinet and I I am going to make a bad choice. Yeah, I, I, I see so much within how the, the I, you, you know, you're wicked smart, like they'd say on the East Coast, and you have a <laughs> lot of knowledge about like um, being a doctor, you know, um, I'll share a quick little quip with you. But my mom always used to tell me you're only as good as the company that you keep. And as I've gotten older, uh, all I've done is attach myself to doctors. So now I talk to at least a doctor a day. And you guys are all amazing and wonderful and have an insight that I don't carry. Um, the only thing that I have going for me is my consistency and the vernacular and the words that I share and the platform that I've created. But I think that being able to share your story and your your powerful you know, study that you've been doing for, what, 29, 30 years and uh, what, you, what you've been doing for your community, most people, I didn't even know how much information you had. <laughs> But, you know, for, for what you are sharing with people today, I think, you know, you actually got me to have an emotional response because I think kids do need care. And I think that what you do know can help families and it can help those those dads that are stressed or those moms that are stressed, those people that are doing it alone that don't have support. And they just like I tell people all the time, they just don't know where to go or who to trust. They, That's the thing. They don't know who their leaders are because we're forced with so many choices and people have become, you know, downgraded intelligently because all they do is focus on the TV. And they, if, if something isn't going right, they tell the kid, watch the TV. Or if they're busy, they say, do that and, you know, get entertained by something that's not me. And I think that what we do is we take ourselves out of the cycle of responsibility 
And, you know, we, we get angry then and we get distant then. And then that builds negative vibes and behavior. And I can tell you right now that if I go anywhere, people can feel an energy and an aura around me because I put off goodness and lightness. But you can also tell when somebody's going through a troubled moment when they're around you, you probably put your hands on them and you're like, oh, boy, yeah. you have you, you, we need to retune you because your life, your tonal life, which chiropractic was based on is tonal. Um, your tone is off. But Absolutely. when your tone is on and you're unsubluxated, you can be a beacon of light and you can follow your highest life values and you can make an impact in the world. But most people just, they feel subordinate to a 40 hour work week. They feel subordinate to poor health. They feel subordinate to people telling them what to do, telling somebody that, that I'm, they're my boss instead of saying, no, I'm my own boss. You know, I, I, I don't know the last time I ever said somebody is my boss because I won't. I don't subordinate. And I know that I'm my greatest gift. And I know that I'm my own leader. And that's why people listen to what we do, because we are, you know, delivering the truth and keeping free speech alive and well in chiropractic. Absolutely. And we, and we need to be out there cohesively in force doing that. And um, so, again, Elvis, listen to the song. I did it my way. You know, there's there's a lot of good meaning behind if you listen to the words on that. Um <laughs> But you brought up uh, you brought a, a good point up. If we live, if we live congruently to what's what's good for us, chemically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you become a person. Um, you do, you're your own walking billboard. You don't need to advertise, and um, you're going to have a waiting list practice like I do, because people want that. They're they're dying for that sense of well-being and, and that energy and that light. And, um, and again, you, if you live it, if you believe it and you live it, what's right for you, that's really important for me. Don't create a practice like mine or like anybody else's create the life and the practice that resonates with you. And you will, you'll have everything you need and want. You know, my friend Kat Sarah's there on the line with us and I gave her some motivation the other day. And I said, you got to keep your head up and your heart strong. Yep. And and if people just believe in that much about themselves and their impact on themselves, then they can become a better leader for others. And I think that's a whole idea of subordination within ourselves. If we don't keep ourselves strong, if we don't keep motion in our body, if we don't start feeding ourselves with good nutrients. Um, one of my posts today was, is our food source bankrupt? <laughs> yes, it is. I can tell you that. <laughs> So if we're not eating good stuff, how do we expect ourselves to perform well? You can't. You can't. And then and then you can't. Then again, it's it's that topple down effect. You know, you and I were talking a little bit about um, the three M's. I, I do a class yeah. called methylation, mitochondria, metabolism, um, and it's pretty heady and intense. But methylation has become a big, a big thing in the last decade, and particularly this gene called MTHFR. And it's not just about MTHFR. There's a lot more to it than that. But we in, in that in this whole methylation biochemistry, which pretty much rules the roost in our in our biochemistry, they talk about different medications that can strip key nutrients and block these pathways. Well, subluxation will do the same thing because we're in, if we're in autonomic dysregulation and we're kicking out cortisol, it is going to have the same effect of stripping nutrients along with our foods that are depleted, magnesium, zinc copper, magnet, these, these key nutrients and a gene, various genes cannot function properly if they don't have that. I call it a co-pilot. They don't have this assistant to help them run to work. And what if a gene regulates dopamine or regulates serotonin or regulates key nutrients in our body, the body and brain shut down, they're depleted. Um, so we need to live in that paradigm too to be an example and lead by an example. Well, it's just like the whole thing is they say that you're the sum of the five people you spend your most time with. Well, yeah. you're the sum of the five things that you eat as well. <laughs> yeah. you know, eat, drink. Uh, you're the sum of that. Engage in tech. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, you're the sum of that. And that's who you are. And that's why they say you are what you eat. You are what you think. You are yeah. what you, you are what you stand for. You yeah. are what you settle for. You are all of that. And if yeah. you allow that to become you, then you will eventually, you know, find find or lose your identity. Exactly. And I think I think Absolutely. that that goes back to psychological, back to like Freud. And it goes back to like 
creation of like species back to Darwinism and, you know, survival of the fittest yeah. and, you know, have your priorities above the Atlas, right? Yeah. And if you have the priorities above the Atlas, right, then you can take some of these grandiose ideas, become educated. You can become an influencer. You can be the leader of your family if that's what you're looking for. You can yeah. be the leader of your tribe if that's what you're looking for. Or you can become the best follower that you could ever hope to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. We boy, we got we got going today, didn't we? <laughs> I know, I know. And, and roll. We we are pushing up on the edge of our time. Um, is there anything that we should share with our audience out there? I know that you wanted to share some ideas if somebody's burned out or struggling in practice, what they might be able to do. Well, I think we touched on that. I think that's really um you know, build the life and the practice of your dreams. What is your practice paradigm? Mine has shifted over 28 years in practice and, and not, I mean, I hated biochemistry and now I'm a, you know, a neurobiochemistry nerd. Um, but it, it, it's, it ignites me. It's my passion. It's my fire. So build the life and the practice that you want. Um, incorporate those things. You know, I think I like studying maybe just because I want to save my synapses and my keep new synapses firing in my brain. But that's the biggest thing is, is identify what resonates with you. Pick a mentor, a coach, a, a tribe, a following there you go, that resonates with you. It may not, it, it, you got to find what's your bag of chips and really be true to that. And don't let anybody, um, build your identity for you. Exactly. And, you know, I, I just appreciate you making some space and some time for me today. Um, it's such a pleasure to get to know you. I can't wait till we get to link up again. Um, and anybody that's out there, um, tell them a little bit about the coursework that you do for people and they um, might. Want well, okay. What about this? I have, a, uh, you can go just to um, intersect for kids. So I N T E that I N T E R S E C T, the number four life intersect for life.com. You can see our website there, but we have some um, great online CE classes. And if you type in um, for the next, well, let's do it through the month of June. Um, anybody that's listening, if you type in the coupon code changing lives, use the coupon code changing lives, you'll get $50 off. You'll get, one of them is 12 hours of CE credits. One, two of them are eight hours. Phenomenal content, content that you can really do to, to jump in and change lives and really get to the core root of a lot of these things. Um, and then we've got a lot of other fun stuff coming down the pipeline. One of them that we're incredibly excited about is a new, um, we're calling it Developing Minds University. It's going to be coming out early next year. Um, and we're going to change the course of the lives for children uh, for generations to come. We're doing it. Well, I, I am uh, blessed to get to know you. Um, I know right I, lead, back at you. I lead with my heart and I lead with uh, integrity. And I think that having somebody like you on my team now that I can uh, reach out to with any of these questions Anytime. about kids and about development of families, um, I'm going to use you as a great resource and not just use you, but um, you know, take that as a, a life lesson that we all have resource in each other. And that if you take the time to get to know somebody, they could be that one element that will give you the chance to help more people. And uh, I'm just going to close out saying thank you to Tristan and the Cairo Sushi family for supporting me and Cairo Hustle. And if you guys are interested in going to Cairo Sushi on June 21st through 24th out in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Westgate Hotel, reach out to me. You can put Chester in as a promo code and get 50% off of your tickets. Well, and I just want to close out saying you're just one story away. Keep hustling. Bye. <laughs> See you, Monica. Bye. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.